Hey, and welcome back everyone to our hacking streams here. So uh, what we're going today is we're going to continue working with a Vision 5 2 board by Star 5 featuring the JH7110 SOC. And we're going to continue where we left off last time, which is when we tried CPU on it, which worked just fine. And then we tried it, uh, tried to KXAC into another Linux kernel from another kernel. Uh, which had unfortunately not worked and well let's actually check out why that happened so i have already opened here my editor for you which is just a file in linux and let's have a look at what this is so uh, this file here is in arc risk 5 purgatory purgatory.c now what is purgatory uh, purgatory is the state between one kernel and another kernel it's actually i think even described here there we go, it runs between two kernels. So this is actually sort of like another binary, if you will, like, you know, just running in this intermediate world and, you know, hence the name purgatory. So it really comes from this uh, image. Anyway, so this is where we got stuck last time. And I figured that, you know, just disabling the purgatory feature would get us a working KXAC. So we can do that from anywhere now, be it either from CPU or directly from the terminal or, you know, some hard-coded uh, application where, you know, we have like uh, just a bootloader doing this, uh, you know, on, on boot. So like we can take a Linux kernel, put that in our flash and then have that run an application on start, which is only doing a KXAC into another Linux kernel. So that would make us a bootloader. But we could also add on top of that as a menu, which is something we already have in the Linux boot project. Uh, but today we're going to, you know, get into some more details and try to keep it very simple. So we're not going to uh, get into menus or anything like that, because, you know, that, that's just another layer of complexity we don't want to deal with right now. So what happened here in this code um, is a verification of a SHA-256 digest. So this is like a hash function. And the thing is, if that function fails, and that's what we see when we scroll further down in the file, well, nothing actually happens. We don't even get any warning printed or anything. It would just infinitely loop. And, you know, that means we would get no feedback on failure. Now, that being an issue, there is another possibility. And I found a blog article actually covering that, uh, which was saying, um, that when they were doing this here on an ARM uh, machine, they were having the issue that was just running very, very slow. And that would take like, I don't know, two minutes until the next kernel would show up, which is, you know, not really uh, something that you would perceive to be working unless you really, uh, you know, wanted to wait that long. And so we didn't do that. Uh, I haven't even tried again later. I just disabled this now and, you know, get KXAC to work. So that is what we're going to look at in a bit. And so let's switch over to something uh, which I have open here. So here we have what we also set up last time. Right up here, we're running Sender. So Sender is the tool that we're using for serving TFTP, a file transfer protocol for loading a kernel image in our case. So that's what we are doing. At the same time, uh, we're using the bootloader called uBoot, which is already in the spy flash and has this capability. Now I've already configured it so that it now automatically just loads the image from TFTP and boots right into it. At the bottom here, the directory I'm currently listing, I actually have a bunch of images that you see and they are actually symlinks. So I have one right here and a few more. And the one interesting for us is this here, vf2.m image. So this is for the Vision 5.2, hence the abbreviation. Uh, the other ones on top here were from our attempts uh, with the Vision 5.1 board. So the predecessor, which I actually also still have right here, um, but we're not doing anything with that today. So on the Vision 5.2, now there are two possibilities for uh, running a kernel for us. So we can either use an upstream or mainline kernel or something which is actually based on, on a very, very current kernel, which is in a development, uh, like not a development branch at uh, Vision 5. It, it, is, it is called upstream. So um, 
there, there is a branch in their Linux for called something something for Vision 5.2 upstream. That is a very recent one. And then there is another one, and that is the one they actually ship in their releases, which is an older kernel, and that's their development branch. In that development branch, now comes the tricky part, they already have full support for their PCI Express controller. And that PCI Express controller is not yet supported in the other branch, you know, which, you know, just takes a while to uh, port those patches over to. So now we are in a bit of a difficult uh, situation because the PCI Express bus is where they attached the port that is at the bottom of the board. It's an M2 slot. So if you know that from like other machines, it's just the same thing. And that's where I can now attach an NVMe. So I ordered one, I did attach it. And so now let's get the full picture with the development kernel. I do not have KXEC yet for a Linux image to load, but I have NVMe support. And on the other kernel, the upstream one, I do have KXX support for files, but unfortunately I don't have the support for the NVMe. So for the PCI Express controller where I attached it. Um, but of course there are ways around this. So essentially there are now two possibilities. I could port the patches from the upstream kernel to the development kernel or from the development kernel to the upstream kernel, which is what I tried first. But, you know, that's actually a tremendous amount of work because the PCI Express controller is a bit more complex. So I also tried the other way now. And well, lo and behold, I actually just got that to work a while ago. So I'm going to cover that today. But first, uh, let's actually just boot up the board right now. I'm uh, pushing a button here. So um, here I have a setup where, you know, I have a USB hub which has power switches. So I can just turn off and on the board because it doesn't have a power switch by itself. And the button on it is actually not a reset button, which I thought first. That's actually not even labeled. I'm not even sure what it's for. It could be anything. Maybe for triggering a soft reset at runtime. So what you see here currently is the kernel being loaded over networks. So the hashes are the progress. And now you will see the kernel come up. So the first things are the clocks. And then come lots of lots of messages from the kernel. And now we're booted into our image already, which is running the CPU daemon. Well, you, you see the banner up there, uh, but unfortunately it's um, garbled a bit. Well, anyway, let's put that aside. Um, what we can now do is we can now actually KXEC. And I already prepared something here where we would even do the full thing and KXEC an image, which is now residing on the NVMe. But let's first, before we do this over CPU now, let's have a look at what we have here. So um, in the root here, uh, the root file system, we have something which is called TCZ or that um, TCZ was uh, intended for tiny core Linux, um, like a compressed version of that, hence the Z. I think it's for like Zlib compression something. It doesn't really matter too much right now. Anyway, um, this directory is currently empty. It's being used for some other, uh, you know, images uh, other people are uh, creating but we're not using that for anything, which means that this directory is now actually empty. What we also have is um, we have slash dev slash NVMe stuff. Uh, let me just type that out a bit. So we have this here, NVMe fabrics. I'm not even sure how that works. Uh, I, you know, I just configured a few options because to be honest, I don't really know much about NVMe and uh, such. Uh, anyway, we have these two here, NVMe zero and NVMe N1. At the same time, again, I'm, I'm not sure uh, what the N1 here is for. I think it's not for partitioning because of my host system. I also have something, but there is like, let's actually have a look at this. Uh, dev, NVM, whatever. Uh, well, there is something like P1, P2 and so on. So these are actual partitions. So yeah, if you're knowledgeable, maybe drop a comment about this. Oh, hey, somebody joined the chat. N1 is the NVMe namespace. Okay, cool. That's good to know. Um, so I guess you can have like multiple things in there. I'm not even sure. So <laughs> usually I know the um, SD uh, entries, for example. So there would be like SDA, SDB and so on. 
and that's how they are enumerated. So I was expecting because of NVMe 0 that we would have like NVMe 0, 1, 2, and so on. I'm not sure what the namespace is about, but I guess it's something around NVMe. Thank you. Um, yeah, something to look into. Anyway, so yeah, with that working now, um, let's actually just do the KXAC now right away and see what happens. So what this script here is doing is it's mounting the NVMe on the TCZ directory and then loading a kernel that is a VM Linux file, which is just an L file uh, from that directory. So let's see what happens. Well, we see our goodbye and now we should get a new kernel and lo and behold, it's right there. So we're now booted into another kernel and we just did this over the KXAC mechanism, which is good news. So what this means now is we can technically take our, um, we, we can take our Linux image here and put that on the spy flash. Now there's just one tiny problem. If we were to do this right now, um, we would need to compress it a bit more. So the current image, let's list the directory again. Um, but let's actually follow the sim link here. So uh, that would be in, whoopsies, uh, that would be in dot dot slash dot dot slash vision 5.2 uh, Linux devel. And then there is VM Linux. So this is 16 megabytes in size, which is our flash size also, but there still needs to be some space for, uh, you know, the rest of the firmware image. So, and this year being um, a, uh, you know, an, an image like this, I'm, I'm not sure how we could actually rework it currently. So what I intend to do is I want to finish up the work in Orboot so that we can actually build, you know, our own uh, full image where we can just pull this in, uh, compress it down. We would not use the VM Linux thing though, which is the elf. Uh, what we would be using is something in arc boot, no, arc uh, risk five boot image, which is a bit larger. So you can see that is now 17 megabytes. Uh, it's for alignment reasons and so on. So when you build the uh, image from a, from an elf, it's doing an option copy and you know just aligning things in a slightly different way than in the elf file. So in the elf file, essentially everything is just one contiguous thing. And here, you know, there are actually some pretty fine offsets. So yeah, that that's where the difference comes from. Now this is already exceeding the 16 megabytes, which is why we would need to compress that down but we have the tooling for it in Orbit, so we can just do that. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about this uh, PCI Express controller, because I feel that is something um, that people might actually uh, want to know a bit more about on this, um, on this SOC here. So if you think about it, this is now a controller which is not yet supported in upstream mainline Linux which is why we needed those, uh, you know, special patches from the development branch here, which I'm currently using. And how did I actually figure this out anyway? Well, we can look at this here. Let's look at the um, menu config and, you know, just never mind what we have up there. I will come back to that in a bit. So when I say menu config, um, whoopsies, that needs some more space. Now we can, we can search for something, it's called PLDA this year. Uh, this is the PCI Express controller, and this is what needs to be activated. So it's activated in the default uh, configuration that Star5 provides. We can have a look at that as well. So there is arc risk 5 configs, and in there, um, there is this dev config thing for the SLC, and then also for the board. So let's look at the one for the board. So this is actually how I figured this out. Um, I just grabbed for like PCI in that directory and here you see they're activating this controller. And well, what is this controller anyway? Um, I did a search for it, um, actually uh, following, you know, what we see here in menu config. So when we look at this again, uh, it says PLDA Express Rich 3 Axi PCIe controller. So that is a bunch to digest. I think most people are familiar with PCI Express already because it's like 
a very ubiquitous thing. You have it in your desktop uh, PCs usually, and then also in, in, in current laptops, you also have that. So sometimes when you have extension cards, like, I don't know, for, you know, wireless, for example, uh, you would probably also have some like a mini PCIe card usually, or also for Bluetooth or, you know, various other purposes. So the question is, what is PLDA? What is this express rich thing? Uh, thing? And what is AXI? So AXI is something we actually talked about a bit at some point. Um, I will come to that in a bit, but let's first uh, look at, you know, what Google just found me. So when I searched for this, the first entry was actually PLDA.com. Good sign, I would say. <laughs> and it's exactly this Express Rich AXI controller IP for a PCIe 5.0 PLDA. Well, um, IP here does not mean internet protocol. Uh, uh, this is just an obsession of lawyers, uh, you know, in uh, the technology space. So what they mean here is intellectual property. It's the idea that, you know, you can sell something and the buyer would not actually uh, possess what they bought. You know, they would only have usage rights and the possession is still in uh, the seller's hand. So it's like their property in a way and they're just, you know, giving away like parts of it and not even like full knowledge, which is why today we cannot actually understand most machines because they are not even disclosed fully. You know, you only get like a very, very tiny high level part usually. Um, anyway, so we don't want to dive too much into that. Let's actually have a look at that website. Um, and at some point I actually ended up right here. This is now at rambus.com because if you read this here, uh, it's saying PLDA is now a part of Rambus. So Rambus bought this so-called intellectual property from PLDA. Uh, this is now their website. And as you can see here, well, there is actually not even much to look at. Um, how the controller works, well, you get a picture and a few sentences and that's it. Then there is some other unrelated white paper thing like data center evolution, a sales pitch. And well, like this is what you get, a few bullet points. It works with AXI. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, it says AMBA AXI layer compliant with AMBA AXI protocol specification, yada, yada, yada. So this is how things are connected eventually to the SOC. And well, that that's it. There is like no information on like, okay, these are uh, like, this is the register block. These, uh, you know, um, are the state machines behind them and how they work and so on. That is not documented here at all. So if you want to get a few, uh, like a few impressions or some, some minor understanding of that, you can now look at the implementation in Store 5 Linux fork and, you know, try to guess what things mean. So what you will find is a bunch of hard coded values again, which have like no further explanation. Same with like numbers of registers, you know, anyway. So yeah, um, luckily we, you know, we don't want to deal with that too much right now. We just use the Linux kernel as our bootloader and you know, that's it. Um, now let's talk about this AXI thing a bit again. So AXI comes from ARM. So we, we already looked at this in some other streams before. And well, ARM started to define this here called AMBA and AMBA is short for advanced, I think microcontroller bus architecture. So it is a bus architecture either way. Uh, a for advanced is like everything ARM does, even the A in ARM itself is now for, well, advanced. <laughs> um, now they did something called APB, that is the advanced peripheral bus, then, well, APB2, just a version two of that. Now there is AHB, the advanced high speed or high performance bus, I think, a light version of that, more versions of APB and so on. And this is where AXI started. And it started with AXI 3, apparently, I don't know. Um, maybe there were predecessors which are not covered in this um, image here. So this is uh, from a blog from Circuit Seller. I don't even know what this is about, really, to be honest. I haven't really read the full article. I just grabbed the image because, you know, it gives you a fair overview of everything. And if you look at um, this year, the evolution, so the new stuff is called uh, Qi maybe like, you know, the word G, like I think spirit or something or CHI, I don't know really. There is no DTI and stuff. And then there is XC5 and it could be XC5 or XC4 or something. 
um, which is uh, suitable for PCI Express. Anyway, so yeah, now you, you have a rough understanding how everything here is glued together. Um, if you search for uh, this PLDA thing, you also find this video here. Um, I'm not even sure uh, what exactly they cover here. So, you know, they have some like configuration tool or something where you can, you know, glue together if you make an SLC. Uh, you know, you can glue together your uh, whole thing and, you know, just pull in this PCIe controller thing. Um, but, you know, they, for some reason, they don't just do that in code, which would probably be much simpler. They use this GUI thing for a configuration. I don't know. So, yeah, in, in more modern development, you know, where <laughs> you would have something like an our continuous integration servers or something, um, you would probably not use this. But, yeah, I'm not that much into SLC design so far, so I, I can't really tell too much. Anyway, yeah, this is like, a, you know, this wizard style of development, you know, with lots of lots of options uh, in the meantime. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's the uh, PCI Express controller. Now let's talk a bit about KXEC again, and I want to do a bit of an experiment now. So I will come back here again um, to this pane, and now let's see if we can actually KXEC also into another image not from Linux Devel, but, you know, from the uh, mainline branch. So this is uh, the mainline or upstream branch. And let's see if we can now load and execute this image. Um, it's saying device or resource is busy. Could not bring up interface. Um, that is strange. Huh. Something isn't working properly here. So, yeah. Well, uh, let's see if we can do it with this image again. No, nope, that doesn't work either. So I'm, I'm not sure why actually, to be honest. Um, let's see if we get IP addresses. I mean, we, we could reach it, right? So we got a response and everything. So I'm, I'm not sure. It could also be that I actually wrote an image to the NVMe, which is like a bit different and doesn't really support uh, KXEcing again. Yeah, I, I don't remember, to be honest. So let's do the following. I will just turn this off again and turn it on again. And then let's see if that works. So yeah, what I want to do is I want to really, uh, you know, boot into a different version of Linux. So this would be the point here. Uh, this version we're booting again right now is version 5.15.0, which is, you know, like from I don't know, an, a year and a half ago or something. So that was an LTS release, which is, I guess, why they cho uh, chose it. Um, I mean, it's, it's a fair choice to use a long-term uh, support kernel. So potentially you could, you know, just take their patches and rebase that onto uh, some other 5.15 kernel. Um, or, you know, I don't know, uh, just uh, keep picking patches from there or something. Anyway, so yeah, we want to boot into a more recent kernel now, which is based on version 6.3.0 of Linux. So this is what we have here in this directory now. So I will now try another KXX, so I just hit return, and let's see what happens now. So the first thing that should happen is, well, the file needs to copy the over network into the memory on the board. So this now takes a file because uh, it takes a while because the file is actually residing on my laptop, right? So I'm running something from my laptop, but on that board. So yeah, it might also be that it wasn't really ready yet because it just I know, did some DHCP stuff again. Yeah, let's see what happens. If nothing happens, uh, we will just try again or something. Yeah, actually, let's just do that. So let's try again. Um, yeah. That stuff may take a while. Oh, interesting. It is it is a bit unhappy now. Why is it unhappy though? And that thing doesn't work either. That is very unfortunate. Uh, but the KXEC from NVMe should still work, I would think. It does, it does. Um, well, that is a bit strange. Anyway. So yeah, let's not get derailed too much. Um, let's do this a different way. So let us unlink this VF2 mImage uh, symlink here. And instead, 
uh, let's use an upstream image again. And let's see if we can, you know, change from a version uh, 6 kernel to the version 5 kernel. So I will do this by just turning off and on the board again. Um, so it will now load over network again, uh, this image here, which is now the upstream image. So that would be a Linux 6.3.0 kernel. Um, we, we can actually look at that in a bit, so I can just print the kernel version. And uh, yeah, I will just do this now on the left hand side, um, just for, you know, convenience. So the, the thing is, uh, for CPU to work properly, we always need to wait a bit for like the random number generator, for example, the HTTP to be working properly and so on. So, sorry, not CPU. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, we get uname-a. This is now 6.3.0 RC3. So this is a fairly recent kernel. Um, I actually just built that like yesterday. So as you can see here, uh, this is from like, 25 hours ago or something. Um, yeah, now we want to see if we can do, oh, actually let's do two things. So the first thing I want to do is, I want to load this kernel now, a version five kernel. I want to see if that works. And then I want to see, uh, oh no, we cannot load from NVMe here because we don't have that supported. Anyway, let's let's just do this here and see if it works. It should actually. So I'm I'm not even sure uh, why we had this issue with the other kernel. So here you see it says bye. And it doesn't seem to say hello again. Um, yeah, that could technically actually be a purgatory issue again now. Um, we, we could spend the two minutes now and wait for <laughs> something to happen, uh, which I think is not like a very good idea to spend our time right now. Um, so let's do the following. Let's go to this directory. This here is the, um, like the, the current, uh, version of the remote. So, uh, let's say good show. Then you will see this here is exactly this commit. So this is the upstream branch vision 52 upstream. Uh, so this is at, let me show you my uh, remotes here. This is at github.com store five tech Linux. So this is what uh, Emil Renner is working on. Um, yeah, picking patches here and there, like this year, for example, being not for upstream, this is just the readme file for it. Uh, so let's see again. Um, oh, they even put some notes in here uh, with some minimal requirements for uh, having this kernel working. Interesting. So yeah, uh, let's let's see again. So let me fetch and let's see if we get something new. I, I don't think so because it's like we get now. I guess nobody is working on this right now. Okay, so we get nothing new. Um, let's grab for uh, purgatory and let's see if that is in the config. So, yeah, there is config arc has k uh, has kx uh, purgatory, and but the purgatory is not enabled. So it would be enabled if there was. Um, I can actually show that if uh, SHA two five six was enabled, and that is actually how I disabled uh, the. Uh, purgatory eventually. So if we search for purgatory, um, there you see it. Dep oh, look, look at this. So, uh, okay, so we do have the purgatory enabled now. So you see here, crypto, SHA-256. I had disabled that at some point. I guess it just came back when I took the newer version of the branch. In. Okay, so let's disable that. Now you see how I actually got things to work. Uh, we're searching for SHA-256 and that is here. And as you can see, we cannot unselect this. So if you don't have uh, these here, but you just have dashes, that means you cannot unselect this option. Uh, what does that mean? So we can look at the help here. It means it is actually hard enabled by something else again. 
And this something else is, well, good question. Um, I think it was something like, uh, some, it, it could be some cryptography settings. Yeah, like, I uh, know the RNG, for example, like the random number generator, uh, that could be. Um, let's, let's see what we have here. So we can just walk through this list here to figure out why this was enabled. So you see crypto device on the JH7110 is enabled. Crypto is enabled. Crypto hardware is enabled. SLC store five is enabled. And well, that enabled SHA-256 for us and that transitively also enabled the purgatory again. So uh, that is a bit annoying, isn't it? Okay, let's see if anything happened here so far. No, nothing happened. So we're going to do this here, which is a really horrible idea, but let's do this nevertheless. So instead of um, doing this here now, instead of saying depends on crypto SHA-256 equals yes, and this stuff here, um, we, we can just remove this, right? So let's see what happens now. So we just rebuilt the kernel here. Um, this may take a second. Ooh. Yeah, there is also this here. Um, <laughs> so I actually did try to port over the patches for, um, well, getting the device tree uh, for the PCI Express patches and so on. So this was my failed attempt. Um, yeah, that means uh, we we need to we need to do something here now. So let's let's say git add arg risk five. Uh, okay, config. So this is now risk five. Uh, hard disable purgatory. Um, so this is now work in progress for uh, for the B DTB for PCIe something. Um, let's actually have a quick look at the log here. So let's look at the like, I don't know, 10 last commits. So I just did this here. Okay, then we can just, we can just revert that. Um, and I have something. Uh, I, th I thought I had other patches. Hang on a second. So This is now the, oh, hang on a second. Th then we can just revert this. Oh, I, I guess, I, yeah. So here, here is what I did. So I was jumping around between a, a few different revisions. So um, yeah, in this one, I didn't even actually have the uh, driver for the, uh, for the PCI Express controller, yeah. Anyway, so you see this image is also a bit larger. It's uh, like almost 19 megabytes now. Anyway, so let's see if um, if that works now. So I'm just turning off and on again. Yeah, uh, this year never returned. Uh, it, it sometimes happens, so that can be a bit annoying. Uh, how do we solve this? We just kill all CPU. And there we go. So yeah, let's wait for the kernel to boot up again. And it's now uh, again loading the uh, Vision 5.2M image, which is now pointing to the upstream kernel, which is what we just rebuilt again. So yeah, as you can see, kernel comes up. Uh, so this is the version 6.3.0 RC3, and it is a fresh build. So this is from like a second ago, right? So yeah, you see the time down here. All right, so it got the HTTP configured and let's now see if we can KXEC into the develop kernel, which is the one which can uh, talk to the NVMe. So the, um, the command will definitely take a while always just because the file is a bit larger and you know it needs to be transported over the network. Um, I'm not even sure to be honest how fast the network is on this here right now. Uh, 
it could be gigabit, it could also be 100 megabit or something. Um, I'm not even sure. So either way, this is attached to like, uh, on, on my USB port, I have this, um, you know, the sort of USB hub, but for like USB 3, and then there is a network controller uh, part of that. And then, you know, that is how I'm connecting to the Vision 5.2 board. And on that one, again, there are two ports for Ethernet. Um, and I, I just remember that uh, the boards that they send out for people who did the crowdfunding early on, you know, some of them were actually downgraded to 100 megabits on uh, one side. So yeah, this seems to be uh, like not working again. Okay. Um, yeah, I have the following idea. I, I think this purgatory thing is enabled either way, even though I just removed this stuff here. Um, or did I? Yeah, I did. So yeah, I, I think the I've also seen some patch hard coding that. So let's do the following. Um, let's actually disable the crypto thing, which like enables us to uh, to disable the uh, SHA hash and then the purgatory should be definitely disabled. So yeah, let's scroll through this here. Um, I think it was like uh, crypto, crypto, crypto dev there this year. So with this disabled, we can now uh, we can now deselect SHA256 this year. And now purgatory is definitely no longer available. Yeah, no, nothing happening over here. So I will just turn it off and on again. Um, let's just wait for this to be built. And that is done. Let's kill the CPU thing again. Yeah, it is a bit annoying. But you know, at least we got it to work in the first place. Like we're at the like proof of concept stage right now. Um, so yeah, just relax a bit and don't expect like you know, like a full working product yet. Um, but this is good news anyway. So yeah, we, we have like, technically we have all the pieces now um, to boot from NVMe without having an extra SD card, for example. So yeah, let's see. Yeah, this might just take a while again, just like Earlier, I think it also took like a minute or so until we got some feedback, um, which is just fine. So eventually, oh, look at this. And do we get a new image? Yeah, it doesn't look like it. So here's the thing. Um, we, we can actually see if we can uh, boot into the same kernel again. So not every version of Linux is always compatible with KXacking into any other version. So this means, uh, you know, you actually need to know what you can boot. Um, there are people working on that. And there have actually been lots of improvements in the newer kernels, um, which is technically what we had been running here. But yeah, it's like, it, it's a bit hard. Uh, to be honest. So the thing is, if you transition from a running kernel into another one, uh, you know, you need to know what the new kernel would expect from the platform. So, you know, you already did some stateful setup of all the hardware resources now. And so you would need to reset that to the like original state, which is sometimes not too well defined, or, uh, you know, not, not fully known. So yeah, it's not that trivial. Yeah, so let's see again. Let's try uh, k exacting into the same kernel over CPU now. Um, I'm very sure this will actually work just fine now uh, because it worked when I tried earlier. The only difference is now that we have these extra patches that I just took, uh, well, yesterday when I uh, worked on this branch, which is the upstream branch. So let's, uh, let's wait for the few seconds for uh, this to show up. And uh, that should then also uh, conclude the stream already again for today. I just wanted to do a rather short one to demonstrate all of this here. 
and you know just show that essentially things are working uh, and we can in fact use the NVMe and everything. And well, then we will get back to our Orboot development uh, eventually. And well, there you go. Uh, you see it's working from the same kernel uh, you know, in, into itself, sort of. So yeah, um, with that, thank you very, very much for tuning in. Um, like if you are watching the recording on YouTube now, uh, maybe drop some comments if you're interested in that. Uh, I will provide all the links and also um, some some notes on my own kernel fork. Uh, well, where I just grabbed a bunch of patches from <laughs> the version six kernel and pushed that over to the 515 kernel, which is the one uh, which got us uh, both the NVMe to work and well, KXacking from it. So yeah. Uh, Take care and see you another time. Goodbye.